Hello. Hi, Stina. Hi, oil paintings. Uh, good evening. We're, we're now live. Um, so, anyone else there in the chat? Just getting set up for tonight, going to be, or this morning, this afternoon. Uh, here in Germany, it's, it's evening, it's nine o'clock. Um, I'm going to be working with Mallow Flower Ink tonight, uh, which is a, a really lovely color and it's a really amazing flower. So that's going to be fun. Hi, Beata. Hi, Susanna. Working with markers, awesome. Work with whatever you got. Annette, hi. Rika, David, hi. Um, Cool, I have a little video for you to, to lead in to the, to the session tonight because I've got some mallow flowering nearby. So I'll just share that with you. I think that was fun last week. We had this pinecone ink video uh, and I think it's a nice way to lead into the, the drawing session um, with this particular ink. So here's a, a bunch of mallow petals that I've collected. They're all dried and can be turned into ink whenever I want to use them. So that's fun. Hi Sheila. Uh, let's watch this mallow ink video. So a friend of mine told me that this uh, mallow or malva in German is a, a really great color plant and I had never really noticed it before. And then as soon as I looked it up and knew what to look for, I started seeing it everywhere. And something really lovely with this is that once it's finished being pollinated, that the, the blossoms just come off really easy. So we leave the flowers, uh, let them be pollinated because then there'll be more seed and hopefully more flowers next year. And um, just with a, a gentle touch on the, the dry petals, and if they're ready to come off, they, they just come off really easy, which means they've already been pollinated and uh, they're ready to uh, be turned into ink. They can be collected, they can be dried, and we sometimes have bugs in them. And so these dry mallow blossoms are really great to collect. They're often lying around on the ground, and you can pick them up and, um, and make some really nice purple ink with them. Holly using pomegranate seeds and although this would be lovely to paint with we are going to take our dried mallow blossoms and make some mallow ink and maybe the color combination between pomegranate and mm. mallow would be really amazing too. So this can be done without cutting the the petals but as I would like them to yeah. really quickly release okay I just um I'll start the video again I put the sound down because I had this weird feedback um message um and I thought I, I dropped my sound down so you, you didn't hear any sound on that I guess um, I'll start it again and I hope there won't be any feedback issues. So a friend of mine told me that this uh, mallow or malva in German is a, a really great color plant and I had never really noticed it before. And then as soon as I looked it up and knew what to look for, I started seeing it everywhere. And something really lovely with this is that once it's finished being pollinated that the the blossoms just come off really easy so we leave the flowers uh, let them be pollinated because then there'll be more seed and hopefully more flowers next year and um, just with a, a gentle tug on the the dry petals um, if they're ready to come off they they just come off really easy which means they've already been pollinated and they they're ready to uh, be turned into ink. They can be collected, they can be dried. They sometimes have bugs in them. And so these dry mallow blossoms are really great to collect. 
they're often lying around on the ground and we can pick them up and um and make some really nice purple ink with them holly is eating pomegranate seeds and although this would be lovely to paint with we are going to take our dried mallow blossoms and make some mallow ink maybe the color combination between pomegranate and um, mallow would be really amazing too so this can be done without cutting the the petals but as i would like them to yeah. really quickly release the pigment i'm going to chop them up a bit so that they will be able to more easily flow yeah. into the water and it's yeah. really interesting these flowers uh, compared to poppy and rose uh, when they get wet the, the ink has this kind of strange slimy consistency and it's a lot like hollyhock uh, they, they're quite similar um, and they have this weird sliminess so that, that'll be interesting but just it's such an incredible color and just i don't i don't know how much you can appreciate that from here but look at this dark purple it's so delicious so I'm just going to put them in this jar and pour some boiling water over it and if need be you can also simmer it to, to help release the pigment. Oh, it looks blue. So uh, we'll just let this steep for a while and uh, then check out the amazing colour that we're going to get. So I've just put it in this little frying pan. I'm just going to simmer it a little bit, but you can already see this lovely colour here. And with heat, we'll be able to extract more and more uh, of this nice pigment and get it nice and dark. While Holly has been working on her pomegranate, and she's had a lot of pomegranate, the mallow has been simmering, and I'm going to fill it in here and then squeeze it all out so it's still quite hot. Careful Holly, it's hot. And this is a really lovely colour here. And a lot of a lot of liquid is retained in the petals now, so I really want to squeeze it all out so that I get as much ink as possible. And when it when it cools down it becomes really slimy. So that's, yeah, a really nice purple colour. So normally I'd squeeze this with my, my hands, but at the moment it's really hot. Careful Ollie, it's hot. So we have this lovely dark purple ink here. And let's draw with it. Okay, so yes, Holly is indeed cute. Um, I'm glad that worked with the sound the second time around. Um, yeah, this mallow colour is just incredible. Um, Beata, I have, I have experimented a little bit with the, the juice from the seeds, but I'm going to cook pomegranate um, skin that creates another ink, so that might be something interesting for a future live stream. Um, there is a pale pink mallow. I think it's called Rose Mallow, um, and I think it can also be used. I've never tried it though, because we have this really nice purple one, so I just I haven't tried the pink one yet. Um, and Beata is going to use her dark avocado ink. Awesome. So I'd like to introduce you to our, our muse today, Cody K. Um, I, this is really a lovely reference photo. Um, he referred to it as rose-colored glasses and the sketchy app. And um, I yeah, just think it's wonderful. He has these floral tattoos and he told me the um, it's yeah, nasturtium, passion flower and jasmine. 
and these uh, tattoos represent, these flowers represent um, important people and times in his life. So I think it's really wonderful to be uh, working with the floral ink with uh, someone who has such a special um, connection to flowers. So I'm just get my reference up and we'll get to it. So I've got this mellow ink. It's really delightful. And just switch over here. Hello, Ensim. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, these are the dry mallow petals. Uh, these are still from last year. It's only just started flowering this year. So uh, it's really good to collect and store it and you can use it at any time. Um, I have this really amazing looking elder pen that I made. It just has, uh, I, ju I just think it looks like a wand. It looks so cool. So I'm going to work with this one. I've cut it especially for this drawing. And for the rose-colored glasses, I'm going to use a little bit of lemon juice as a modifier with the mellow ink because it turns out a really nice uh, pink color. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's start drawing. So if you're, you're here and ready to draw, then uh, good luck, have fun. <laughs> Oh, Beata, you're getting better at drawing glasses. That's great. I, I really enjoy drawing glasses. So there, there have been quite a lot of them that I've selected uh, in the past month. And yeah, this is officially like the, um, the last session of the first month. So the, of the Ink Naturally course, um, which has been super fun. People doing amazing work. And, and this is kind of the, our, yeah, it's, it's still up, it's still live, um, and now it's like on demand. So every video, every lesson is available and people can join and they can just binge watch every episode if they want from the beginning to the end. So I don't know how many hours of, uh, of tutorial videos that would be. I'd be amazed if someone just binge watched it all. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of for the, the inaugural first month uh, of the Ink Natural and Ink Naturally course. This is kind of our, our last session, but I'm going to keep live streaming anyway because um, it's just super fun drawing with you. So here I'm just starting with the glasses. Um, really nice, clear, distinctive form. It's got really cool frames here. It's interesting. I went, I've, I've looked at this photo many times, um, but I haven't drawn it yet. And... Um, once I start drawing, really start to notice uh, things I've never seen before. So there's this like top bar across the top of both of the lenses. I hadn't seen that before, and it's a uh, really cool design feature. Um, yeah, so Beata, I, I think I already answered the question. So there's going to be a, a, a change to the timing potentially, but we'll let you know about that. Um, so yeah, the live streams is uh, lots of fun, and yeah, it's a cool way to just keep connected. I'm really, I'd be really happy to see if people are going to keep working with their natural inks. I'd, I'd love to keep uh, hearing about it and seeing what everybody's doing. Um, it's something that just I love so much, and it's it's really cool to see other people enjoying it too. Um, I picked this photo just because it, um, it's beautiful. <laughs> There's such incredible uh, light and shadow structure in this photo. I even like in the background, there's so much nice, uh, yeah, the way it's altering between light and shadow is really, really lovely. So thanks a lot, Cody, for sharing this wonderful photo with us. This mallow ink is really interesting. It's compared to other ones, it's really it's kind of a bit slimy. Uh, and I, so it probably doesn't need any binder. I haven't put any in. And I noticed just compared to other, other petals that I've worked with, that has a really kind of slimy consistency, which is a little bit special. But sure, why not? 
So what are, if you're drawing along at home, uh, what are you working with at the moment? The artist said she's got an avocado ink, which is awesome. And um, someone had markers. So at the moment, I'm just, uh, I want to set up this, these shadow shapes. And yeah, the, the glasses are just so cool. And there's so much interesting stuff happening around here. And in case uh, you haven't watched me draw before, I, I love these broad edged pens and I love cutting them from, from elderwood. And as you see here, it allows a really, uh, a really nice variation in line quality. When you use the thin side of the pen, you can get this really lovely, crisp kind of lines. And uh, when you flatten it out, you can get some really nice, thick, bold lines. I love it. Now Stina's got her poppy and rose. That's wonderful. So yeah, rose-colored glasses. So rose with a little bit of lemon juice would probably be nice for the, the pink hue in the lenses. I was thinking about using some rose, uh, but we'll see the... Uh, Lemon with the mellow actually has a really lovely pink color as well. So I'm just wondering at the moment, should I just kind of going to start going out into the head space? Um, but, oh, sketchy app just mentioned me in a story. Cool. I'll uh, turn my notifications off. <laughs> uh, but I think I'm going to stick with the glasses for now. Um, it's nice to sometimes stay in one place. I often tend to wander around as I'm working on a portrait. But we'll... let's, th this time, as uh, let's just start with a really nice uh, glasses and eye session to, to start off this one. So I really enjoy drawing glasses because I think the this really clear, like um, these clear, hard, crisp shapes. Uh, such a lovely contrast to the flowing, soft, uh, organic feel of the, the rest of a portrait, which we often often have that. And it so you can create this, like starting with the glasses as we're doing now, it gives this point of orientation to spread out into the rest of the portrait and to keep comparing things. Um, I just notice... <laughs> comparing things that I could I should have dropped that lens a bit um, but that's okay I'll just just go with it so the thing about comparing and getting our orientation right as we work through a portrait I think it's cool to have something like the glasses as a point of reference to help find a way around So it's, uh, it's pretty summery in the Northern Hemisphere at the moment. How's everybody dealing with that? We, we live under the roof and we have like this one big room and the sun just shines on our roof all day. So it, it heats up a lot in our flat. So it's often uh, much warmer than it actually is outside in our place. But having, I live in central Germany now, but having grown up in Australia, I, I can handle the heat 
I think it's a, it's like nostalgic when it gets up into mid thirties towards 40 degrees, just like in my childhood. It wasn't that hot here today. Ah, Clive, cool. You're here from Cardiff. Nice to have you here. So, yeah, I think I, I, I can already see some things that I've, I've kind of skewed the perspective a bit, but uh, in spite of that, I still think um, I didn't get the perspective of the eyes right, really. Maybe sometimes it's a bit challenging to, to be talking all the time and drawing as well and uh, reading questions, but... I'm just going to go with it. Um, maybe his glasses are just a bit skewed in in my version here. But it's fine. Just keep going. And here, okay, the whole the squinting down trick, which I think is so awesome. Uh, there's just such strong, dark shapes. And by squinting down, you see how the moustache turns into the beard and the neck and the back of the head and the hair. It's all just like one big abstract shadow shape. And so that's going to be a... Uh, yeah, I'm going to use the thick edge, the broad edge of my pen, and just start filling in some of those shadowy areas. I think it's, it's going to work perfectly with this picture, with this technique. So big, strong shadow shapes is uh, something I really... And draw, enjoy working with. Okay. Hello, BB has returned. You've made lots of ink, that's great. And Ensign. Ah. Oh. 10 hours in a warm home office. Oh, lovely. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes it's nice to get really warm. I, I enjoy contrasts in life. It's so warm and cool. You know, you can appreciate a cool breeze afterwards if, uh, if there's one available. You love the color. I also love the color. This Malva is so incredible. And as I mentioned in the, the video at the beginning of this, um, last year was actually the first time, I didn't mention that, but now I am. Last year was the first time I made Malva ink. And I had been to a festival and I had given an ink making workshop and I came home and we had friends visiting and they were like, oh yeah, cool that you're doing this ink making stuff. We had friends visit and they, they're into ink making as well. And they told us, uh, she actually bought some some art supplies with her so we could paint together. And she had dried malva, just like these. Um, so she bought some from her garden. And I was like, what's this plant? I've never heard of it before. Um, I had heard of mallow in Australia, uh, but I, I'd just never been aware of it. And as soon as she told me about it, and I, I looked it up, I was like, okay, malva is a good plant. I hope I can find some. Does it grow here? Is it a wild plant? Is it like a, a garden plant? Um, I hope I'm going to find some. And then I walked out of our driveway and on the at the end of our driveway there was like 20 malva plants growing and I had never noticed it before. And it wasn't until she told me about it. Um, thank you, Aoife, for telling me about the malva as a, an ink plant. Um, and then I suddenly had an awareness of this plant, which I'd just never taken notice of before. And now I totally love it because it has this incredible purple color. It's so nice to, to draw with. And um, Beata, you said you had trouble getting dark inks. Um, I don't know if this grows where you are, but um, as you can see here, it has quite an intense dark purple color. So it's really, 
it's a very nice uh, flower to, to make ink from. Oh, Charlotte, what kind of paper am I using? I neglected to mention that in the beginning. Uh, I have another block here. It is Hanemüller Anniversary Edition Aquarelle, and it is a super heavyweight paper. Um, it's 425 grams a meter square, 200 pounds. Uh, this one is smaller than this one. Uh, and it's such a good paper. I, I just, it has a kind of rough surface, like um, cold press, right? But just the weight of the paper makes it so good to uh, work with wet materials, um, wet mediums. I, I just love, you can do really thick, uh, ink washes, you can get it really wet. It will warp when it's wet, but it dries flat. And that's something I've rarely found with other watercolor papers. So I just work straight from the on the block because with other watercolor papers, you can stretch it onto a surface um, to prevent it from warping. But I love just being able to work straight onto this block and uh, it's such a cool paper. Um, Barbara, yes, it has been recorded and you'll be able to watch it later on. There's a little ink making session with my beautiful daughter in the beginning. Um, try to make ink from Royal Poinsettia. I'm not familiar with that tree, but sometimes if you, you have an ink which, or you extract something and it's not very interesting, if you try adding lemon juice or baking soda, it, sometimes it can have really surprising results that you can have a pretty boring looking non-color and um, by adding modifiers it can be really interesting or you just might need more flowers um, or whatever you're using leaves bark um, and I'll um, carry on drawing them feel free to ask questions and I'll I'll do my best to to look up, pay attention, and answer them. Um, so this is just, I think, so much fun having a big dark shadow shape to work with. So cool. So just using the edge of the pen with the lips here. Really it's, uh, it's cool, kind of echoing the color in the glasses. Um, I'm gonna kind of just fill this area of the top lip and I think I've made his forehead too big. Oh well, that can happen. Um, I added hot water to these flowers, yes, and I, I cooked it um, for 15 minutes. I just let it simmer. And lime, I th I've used lime instead of lemon and it does does the same, has the same effect. So yeah, you can use line. So I've got a brush handy. I'm gonna kind of get the ear sorted out and then I think I'll just like brush in the shadow shape maybe. Add some more like outline as a guide and just be able to fill in the area with the brush. So you can do the same with the pen, but it's it's much much faster with the brush. If you have a nice watercolor brush that can hold a lot of ink, uh, then it can be really useful with large areas. 
Let's see. Let's just use the pen for the ear and then ink it. And I'm also wondering about just making one shape of the that background shadow. Just kind of have a kind of blur right in. Not really. Um, so I have this. Okay, I have this cool, um, it's like a, I don't know, someone gave it to me as a calligraphy brush. Um, I think it's a, this is made in Germany, but I think it's a French style brush. And I washed it beforehand. I often, uh, I, I have caught myself not cleaning my brushes and sometimes I've recorded in tutorial videos where I then put down uh, some brushwork and I still have ink, a totally different color ink, sometimes too dark from my last um, portrait session. And that's a bit unfortunate if you just slap down some, some dark ink <laughs> where you don't want it to be. So it's always good to clean up your brushes when you're done. So yeah, ah, oh, this is just so nice <laughs> to use a brush. Just so fast filling in that space. I I noticed that it's it's hard to get the same intensity, um, that kind of darkness that you do with a pen when you use a brush, because I guess you're spreading out the pigment much more. So it's cool to brush stuff in and then come back with a pen if you want to uh, have more kind of intensity and dark, darker darks. And I, I, yeah, this is so cool. In the background here, there are these really cool shadow shapes as well. Um, I just have a question here from Live. Uh, you have poppy petals. Um, so you can make your poppy petal ink. I chop it up, just put it in water. It's amazing. It doesn't even need to be cooked. Um, and it's really good to. I've been drying petals to to preserve them. And yeah, you can use dried petals to to make ink at a later date. Because uh, sometimes when it's in liquid form, it may not stay fresh. Um, and over a long period of time, the pigment can also change. And in a dried petal form, it uh, preserves the, the color nicely. Um, something I noticed with poppy petals is they, they're so thin and they, they really kind of stick to each other. And it's important to to kind of mix them up and let them uh, dry out really consistently. Uh, otherwise, they just kind of stick themselves to each other and it becomes like this cake and uh, then doesn't dry kind of consistently and make it moldy in between the petals, which I don't think is uh, probably not doing our pigment any favors when they start decomposing instead of drying nicely. So I wonder now about this, if it's already a good time to add some lemon juice. And I'm going to, um, whoops, I splashed some juice up here. I'm going to just break some of the cells here and put my paintbrush straight into the lemon juice and do some lemon modifier magic. I, I just love <laughs> the way the colors change. It's so cool. And this mallow also gives you a really um, wild green color if you use baking soda with it. But I have found the um, baking soda modification of colors to it doesn't tend 
to maintain the color as as well as lemon juice. So it's still super fun to use, but sometimes you can end up with a really different color. So how cool is this? <laughs> Just love painting with lemon juice onto ink and watching the color change. It's so much fun. And you know, use some of that in bottom lip so it's it's not as dark. I'm basically taking the the pigment that's on the brush and, and spreading it down. Because the when we lip from above we generally have a more shadow on the top lip. So I wanted to you know, kind of keep some of that shadow. And I'll save save the pink for that area. Um could maybe be a bit pinker, but we'll let it dry and then See about adding some more lemon juice once it's dried. Karen, yeah, that is amazing, right? <laughs> lemon juice, it's so much fun. It's cool just to to make to drip it into big areas of uh, of ink and watch it all kind of transform and change. It's uh, it's so much fun. Um, so I want. Can use this cool brush to maybe do some cool things with this shadow shape in the background. Super quick and loose. So experimenting with different brushes and different pens and different tools can just, can just be so much fun. Can discover so many different kind of textural effects and different kinds of strokes. That we can use. And he's got these wonderful floral tattoos, which I thought would be really nice to, to incorporate because it's just such a yeah, nice symbolism, a bit of plant love and I just think such a beautiful idea for to have these flowers representing different important people and times. In his life. Um, I'll go back to my pen now for the tattoos. And uh, I'm like gonna use the corner edge so I can get some really nice dark areas. And as as I'm working here, doing some of this line work, this is going to dry and I'll be able to come back and uh, add some more contrast and definition as that continues to dry. So it's it can be good to, to some extent, to plan the order in which you're going to do things. So you know, okay, this is all wet now, I'm going to do something else, come back. But this is not really planned. Uh, I just realized it would be good to spend some time doing this now um, and it's going to give me the opportunity to let the other stuff dry so it's a coincidence but if you're a planning kind of person then you can take that kind of stuff into account and plan. Sometimes I plan things but this is a nice coincidence at the moment. Something that really, um, as I was making, got into making inks, I think something I initially I would do a lot of brush work and I was kind of painting with it. And I often found it was really lacking intensity. Uh, like you can see here, this purple is quite pale compared to the area where I was using the pen. And, and that's kind of what led to me using a pen more and more. And I have uh, brought this along just to show you, and maybe I'll use it, maybe I won't. But I used uh, dip pens for a long time. Um, so this holder, I have lots of interchangeable nibs. And this gives a really nice, consistent, sharp line. But I just love making my own pens. So, And I love the elder tree. 
And a lot of people in the ink naturally course have found it a bit challenging working with sticks. But, um, and I experienced those challenges as well. But I really found over time that I you know, totally enjoy working with it. It helps to work large. If you want to do something really small and detailed, it can, can be a bit tricky. So this, this paper is over A4 size. It's quite big, and um, yeah, so it helps if you're working big. But otherwise, it's you know, it's totally fine to use a, a metal nib. I'm not dogmatic about these things. It's just fun to use uh, natural art supplies that I've made myself. But it's also totally wonderful to just use what you've got and incorporate all these things. And so this is uh, the jasmine on the shoulder. I think both shoulders have jasmine flowers. Here's a passion flower. That's a nice comment. Um, that you've put the, the the tattoos with shadows from plant life on the skin and yeah if you think about it that way it, it is an echo of of nature inked into the skin and be arty you've learned to love your twig that is so good to hear didn't you cut yourself right in the beginning um making stick pens uh was that you um i'm i'm glad you've learned to love it So I, yeah, I, I just think it's super, super enjoyable working with it. And at some point, because I, I know I, basically everyone's gone through the same challenges that I went through uh, in in the course. So a lot of people were like, oh, yeah, I'm having trouble with my, my stick pen. And that also has a lot to do with the ink, uh, how thick it is, what's the consistency of the ink, does it need binder, um, so it's a combination of the pen and the ink that you're using. Um, but yeah, so a lot of people were, yeah, just like me, finding their way uh, with the, the natural art supplies. But once you do find your way, if you stick through it, I just think it's such a beautiful thing to be, uh, be able to create all these art supplies ourselves. Nasturtiums. Is everyone watching familiar with nasturtiums? You can you can eat them and they're like totally fiery, amazing flowers. And the seed pods are really um, oh, they have such such an intense taste. Such a cool idea to, in German, it's Kapuzina uh, Kresse. And they're just such a lovely flower. So cool to have that as a tattoo. <laughs> the art are you. Have a, have a scar to remember this course. I um, I have a scar. Um, before I was making ink and making art and pens with elder branches, I was building flutes from elder. And the first ever flute I made, I put a chisel right along my thumb here and over the joint. So every time I moved my thumb, it would open up. And I, I don't know, I made over 100 flutes. And the first ever one I made, I put a chisel through my thumb. So I have a scar to remember my first uh, flute that I made. So it's nice if you have a scar to remember this course. You'll always be able to remember it. Um, Clive says that willow is good for pens too. That's awesome. Good to know.
cool. Um, walnut is really good. And you can use anything really. Um, I've seen some really wild kind of paintbrushes and things people make where they just kind of tie grass heads together and use this as a paintbrush and get really incredible textures and stuff. Um, or seed pods, or here I've got a pine cone from last week. You know, you could just dip it in the ink and do really wild stuff with it. So I lo just love that, um, that kind of experimental, inquisitive aspect of making art supplies, being in nature, and and kind of seeing things with the, in a new light to think, oh, I wonder what I could do with that. Oh, Sheila's nasturtiums just bloomed yesterday. I'm not sure if you could make ink from them. Maybe um, once they've been pollinated, if they're shedding their blossoms, just collect them and see what happens. Uh, it's worth experimenting with. I haven't tried it yet. I don't have any here. Um, okay, that's an interesting question, Uta. Um, you can use the self-cut pens uh, depending on the hardness of the wood that you use. Um, I have one of my favorite ones. I've been using it for over a year and it's still awesome. Uh, sometimes I've had the corners get worn down. Uh, that actually happens. If you use them a lot, you may wear down the edges and they get a bit rounded off. But it's possible just to... Um, you could cut it again or maybe leave it. Uh, maybe with the rounders corners you get another interesting kind of um, edge to work with. Uh, so it varies, but you know it's so awesome. We can make so many pens. Um, I have so many. I really love this, this branch. These are both elder. It has such a beautiful curve to it. Um, I just... Every time I see dead elder branches, I look for interesting shapes and uh, I don't know how many I have. I have so many. Um, so they will hold for a long time, but you can also make a lot of them. And you can use different pens with different inks. And uh, if you're using, if they have different modifiers, so I put lemon juice in here, which kind of made the purple a bit pinker. Um, if you're using different modifiers, then you may want to use different pens so that they're not interfering with each other, since we can just make them ourselves. Um, you know, feel free to make lots of them. So this kind of nib, I, I bought something like this, a metal nib, which I think cost at least 20 euros just for a nib without a holder. And now, I don't know. I don't know, it was always like this precious, precious nib that I wouldn't use very often. And then one of my kids bent it. I was like, oh, well, now it's this expensive nib is broken. Um, but now I just cut them from pens and I don't have to worry about, don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so yeah, you can keep them for a long time and maybe you're, if you cut a lot of different pens, you may, may come to have a, a favorite. Um, and it's cool to try different things out. I have some that have rounded edges, some that have flat edges, some that are sharpened to a point. Um, I tend to like these flat edge pens uh, more than the pointed ones. So now this is somewhat dry, so I can come back and work into it a bit more. I wonder if just with a bit more lemon juice if I can get get this pinker. I'm not totally sure it's going to work, but maybe it will. So it's looking pinker now, but it, it may dry purple again. And I totally lost that eye, but that's okay because I kind of drew it in the wrong place anyway. <laughs> so I'll be able to correct it. Look at that color. 
I don't know if it will stay like that once it dries, but just, just in this moment right now, it's such a beautiful transformation, that color. So we'll see if that pink holds once it uh, dries. So this has turned into a discussion about scars. Um, a chisel scar on the left inner wrist, or oh, that's um, I think it sounds dangerous. Changing a bike tire, oh totally. Oh, I'm glad that you're still with us. Anyone else have chisel scars or knife scars? Um, do I like Procreate? I do like Procreate. Procreate is so cool. I prefer um, doing stuff on actual paper, but Procreate is, uh, I love it for so many reasons. Um, I love that it's affordable and accessible, so long as you, I guess, have an iPad. I don't know if it works on Android, um, but it's just such a good intuitive program, and uh, back in the day, like I think the Adobe subscription model is just so unfriendly and it's so expensive. So Photoshop, that used to be the standard and most people were either using Photoshop or Painter to do digital painting. And I think Procreate has totally revolutionized uh, digital painting. It's so cool. So yeah, I, um, I use Procreate a lot to plan compositions. Um, and I also draw with it sometimes, uh, but I I don't do so much digital uh, drawing these days. That may change, but I really like natural inks. So, but Procreate is cool. Arm decing, hello. Uh, <laughs> Karen definitely has scars. So if you, if you want to continue the conversation about scars and mishaps in the chat feel free to do so <laughs> I, uh, I won't highlight every statement now but yeah scars tell stories and it's so interesting um, you know, in portraiture uh, wrinkles scars all these things they're just uh, they you know storytelling devices and so the story of cutting yourself, making a pen at the start of this course or the first ever food I made is my a scar on my thumb. Uh, there's, you know, it's, sometimes it can be a bit rough, uh, but yeah, scars definitely are kind of like story, story marks, storytelling elements in our lives, which may rather be forgotten or not, but for better or worse, we, we have them and hopefully, yeah, can live with them. So this might be interesting now in, so I just, I totally just let this shadow shape go into the background. It's just this one indistinct shape, but now putting in some definition into here to, to just kind of indicate, uh, some of those contours, I think that's cool because as we, it's still going to read as one big solid shadow shape. Like if we do the the squint down trick, um, it's still just going to look like a block of shadow. And I think that's a a really cool thing to to work with. Uh, like it, whatever we do in on this side of the face, I won't do too much now. We're nearly finished for today. Um, but you can put some, maybe put some detail into that shadow form and um, yeah, it becomes this clear separate shape. This is cool. I think the the way I put extra lemon juice in there is looking really nice. But I just noticed um, this is too bright, so I want to. A couple little things I can brush into. Uh, some chest hair would be nice. Uh, 
It's got lovely chest hair. So I'm going to be brave and just spread out the bristles of this brush. So I could hatch it in, but this dry brushing may, I don't know, it's, may just kind of imply some kind of hairiness. without having to draw each line. Sometimes it's wonderful to draw every individual hair. Um, sometimes it's cool to find shortcuts. So we've got a few minutes left. I'm just wondering, is, it, is, is there anything else this needs right now? I'm going to put another dark shape down here. I just think this is interesting composition-wise that there's this shadow shape here and it's actually a really kind of clean edge here. Mine's pretty uh, blurry. Um, I, will, I will look at the questions in a moment. Uh, we can take, take a little time to address any questions that anyone may have. But with the, the last few minutes here, I just wanna, if there's anything, if there's anything that sticks out to you and you're like, you've done that totally wrong, or maybe you could still change that, then speak up. Um, you can ha have a say in uh, how I finish this drawing session. I notice there's some discussion about um, self-made paper. It's something I haven't tried yet, but I would love to uh, have a, a watercolour paper, which is also totally locally sourced and handmade. But I think it's quite a challenge with the uh, wet medium. Something I totally love about this paper is it can just handle getting so wet. But I saw a cool... Um, paper making tutorial on Instagram recently is someone who just makes paper from stuff in the kitchen, stuff at home, puts it in a blender and then uses an iron to uh, to dry it and flatten it out. Um, that was that looked pretty cool. How might I fix that eye? Oh, it's still a bit wet. Could take a blow dryer and dry that. Accelerate the drying process. Um, oh, if I if I try and go into that now, it's probably just going to bleed. Um, but I can talk about what I would do. Um, I was happy with the eye that I drew, but I noticed after drawing it that I, it was too high. Uh, I didn't really stick to the perspective of the glasses. Also lost it a bit. There's a few things that are a bit off here. But I think it's still um, still fun, still cool. Overall, the glasses, the rest of the head's kind of expanded. Um, and I see that that is too small overall in the, in the rest of it, but it's okay. The way, so I was happy with the drawing of the eye. It was just too high up. So I would just redraw it the way I did before and just do it a bit lower. And now with because I painted over it with lemon juice, it'll kind of blurred. It's going to be um, kind of indiscernible, the original drawing that I did. So be able to fix that up. And any really fine details, it's a, like taking a either the stick pen or this metal nib um, to add some really nice fine finishing touches. And often the metal nib um, just offers a lot more control for, for doing those fine details at the end. So like the final phase. Um, so maybe I'll do it with this. So that's, I won't do it now. I would love to show you, but um, it's better to be patient because if I draw into this now, I just know it's gonna bleed out and it's, it's just gonna be a horrible mess. So it's good to be patient and have a little time. 
There are some shadow areas in here which I would like to redefine once it has dried. Um, uh, and this like lip line, I would, would add some darkness in there as well. Uh, yeah. So now, um, feel free to ask questions. I'm going to read through uh, what people have been saying and asking. Um, I don't quite understand this question. Uh, the new syncing. Uh, if you want to clarify that, Charlotte. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, use your junk mail to create paper. <laughs> That's a cool idea, Karen. Just put it in a blender and then iron it back together. Maybe you need some kind of something that works as glue, starch or something to stick it together. Um, so, Karen, I, I hope that that explanation of how I would fix the eye um, helps. Oh, it's, it's almost dry enough. It's very tempting to just draw into it. Um, maybe just wait a couple minutes and then might be able to finish up by redrawing the eye. Um, so, yeah, the, the handmade or oh, self made paper discussion, I think, is really interesting. I'd, I'd love to try it. <laughs> Stina's going to miss the scent of cloves. So, with the natural inks, cloves is a, a great way to preserve them because it's like antimicrobial and it prevents mold growth. So, a lot of these, a lot of my jars of natural inks smell like cloves, like Stina as well. But yeah, I see that'd be a great idea to do some more um, natural ink pieces uh, as you continue, because um, now you have all of these amazing inks that you've made. So it'd be great to keep using them. Uh, mango pit. I've never used that. That'd be awesome. Try that. Um, so try it out. If you've got mango pits, try it out. Everyone who's here. Um, hashtag ink naturally with all of your even if you didn't use natural ink but you've been drawing along I'd love to see what you've been doing so hashtag ink naturally and um, yeah it would just be so good to to continue this keep it going like it's, it's so cool that so many people over the past month have been making a lot of inks and doing a lot of experiments and I've made so many inks in the past month and it's so cool to to share it with you all and and it's just uh, I, I just think it's so satisfying to to draw a portrait um with flowers that i've just been picking over the past week and now they're on the on the paper here and these flowers have a new life uh and yeah, it's, it's such a cool thing to do. So yeah, um, as you, Stina, or anyone else, if you're going to keep working with your with your natural inks, I'd love to see what you're doing. So you can tag me and hashtag ink naturally. That would be super cool. Um, that's an interesting observation. Um, creating depth uh, is often, I, I think, um, contrast can do so much uh, and and now that you have some dark ink so you said you, you had some trouble getting the um, darks and now you have this dark avocado ink so that's great um, and here I, I would even if I was going to do another pass I would intensify these dark areas even more and once you have darker areas uh, establishing that kind of contrast really helps to get a sen sense of depth and form and generally the way we read things or what's often the case is what is dark um it's kind of it's like it's in the foreground it's like it's closer uh so it's interesting just to have a different uh, understanding of the different uh, levels of of light and shadow in a piece and if you can kind of uh, recreate some of that in your drawing i think it helps to get a sense of depth um Okay, Charlotte, I, I don't have a new course in July, um, but the Ink Naturally course is now on demand. All of the 
classes are available. And um, the, this is, has been the first sketchy art school Inc. Naturally class, but it won't be the last. So um, July, I'll be taking a break and working on some other commissions. Uh, but if you'd like to keep drawing with me every Tuesday, I have a two hour live drawing session. Um, so follow me on Instagram and we can draw together. We draw each other. Uh, and Tom, who's here, uh, also comes to our drawing session sometime on Tuesdays. It's totally awesome. So you're all invited to come and join us. Um, and it's so cool that Tom has been doing amazing work with his twigs and um, the inks. He hasn't been making his own inks, but he's doing some really lovely ink work. So um, Karen loved the course. That's great. I'm, I'm glad. I, I loved sharing all of these things with you and seeing what everyone's been uh, working on and creating. It's It's been amazing. And it's yeah been so special to be able to, to share in this way. And just, I think it's such an important thing to, to connect to nature. And this is such a beautiful way to do it. Um, so just as a, a final uh, final thing here, this is drying, so I'm just going to try out this eye, see if I can... And as we're talking about depth, Beata, I, I'm tempted now to use my Acorn ink, so often I finish up with the Acorn ink, it's really dark. Um, <laughs> Stina, ink naturally inktober that would be something special wouldn't it um i'm not sure if i'd want to be competing with inktober though but um ah oh, yeah i i, th I thought about the make inktober idea because it's october is also just such a perfect month in the northern hemisphere definitely for making ink um so oh I'll, I'll keep you posted or maybe a build-up to Inktober so that we could make our own inks together and then, um, and then everybody can be, it would be like a, yeah, awesome homemade Inktober extravaganza. It's so cool. So nothing's been finalised with upcoming courses yet, but they, they will be coming and I would love to, to keep keep going on this journey with you all. So here now I've, I've just re-established some of the contrast here. Maybe I can make the glasses seem a bit bigger by pushing out the rims to the edge here. Um, <clears throat> so this is a little, little bonus. Um, it's going to create some extra depth, I think, and it's going to help save that eye that I drew in the wrong place. So now I've got this kind of uh, line here and that's the a bit of the pers like perspective it's not totally spot on like that um, but if I look at the top eyelid in the reference photo and just kind of go from the last point where I can see it where it comes into contact with the rim of the glasses and go straight over it's kind of going to the corner of the eye so I'll put the top eyelid there Got these lovely eyelashes, and it's pretty fortunate the way this this eye is glowing. <laughs> it's, it's not that bright, but it looks interesting. But over here, the light is um, there's not much light, so it's quite dark, which has been fortunate because uh, now I'm able to draw into this and kind of save it, fix that eye. So this is just. Oh, it's like two or three millimeters lower than the original drawing um, that got blurred, but just millimeters can make such a difference uh, in a portrait. You can it can be the difference between getting a likeness or creating a new person. Um, while I'm at it, I'm just I don't know, just doubling up here, redrawing that frame because I think it's too small. Uh, this is a bit wet, but we'll just be brave. And 
sometimes if you're drawing into a wet area you'll kind of get this slow bleed which can look really uh, interesting <laughs> um, but yeah that's cool this is just just a couple minutes has created some extra contrast and Beata on your question of creating depth you know getting the contrast right and being able to push and increase the contrast can just make such a difference to the end result um, oh, and here now I could just get uh, carried away with all these details and stuff just get scratching around with this pen and ah oh, but I'm actually finished so um for today but I think this is uh it's cool hope you've all had fun drawing along um yeah Charlotte uh, the the link is in my Instagram for the Tuesday live portrait drawing session uh, thanks Stina um, but utter cool you're, you're adding a bit more contrast ah just it makes such a difference it's just like I don't know just a few minutes of adding some intense dark uh, line work just I think it's a, a nice way to finish that piece um, okay Suzanne says watch out for Inktober as a brand yeah I won't call it Inktober Um, Marcy just finished the class. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, Charlotte, the Tuesday live sessions is um, 1.30 Eastern Standard Time or 7.30 German Time. Um, Sheila, I'm, I'm glad it was uh, relaxing for you. Um, if you come to Germany and you're around here, then I'd be happy to show you around. Uh, and Sketchy, thank you once again for for having me and uh, giving me this platform to share my passion and love. Uh, it's uh, such a special thing to be able to do, and it's such a nice way to connect. And um, and it's so wonderful seeing people uh, connecting to their surroundings and their art supplies. And it's it's been such a wonderful thing to share. So thank you everyone for for joining me. Yeah, Charlotte um, on Instagram, I'm Dylan underscore Sarah. Um, yeah, so Dylan underscore Sarah. Hashtag Ink Naturally when you uh, share your work. And I am going to continue live streaming on Sundays. Yes, thank you. Um, there may be a change in time um, as we've finished the, the first month of the Ink Naturally class, but I'm going to keep drawing and um, not 4 a.m. Germany. If you're talking about Tuesdays, it's at 7.30 in the evening German time. Um, and Clive, yeah, I, I hope this was a great introduction and that, that the class has just been a you know, that spark of inspiration that can help you get into the world and start seeing colors differently and just getting really curious. Um, St. John's wort is starting to blossom here at the moment and that's also an amazing plant which transforms from, from yellow to red. Uh, so cool. Um, right now it's just after 10 p.m., uh, quarter past 10 at the moment. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so um, Ink Naturally live streams will be continuing Sundays. And if you'd like to hang out and draw live as a group, then join us on Tuesdays and follow me on Instagram, Dylan underscore Sarah. Uh, and yeah, I'm really keen to see what you've all been drawing. So maybe you've already uploaded it on Instagram and Sketchy and, and I'll be able to check that out. So thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing time and uh, art together and thank you for this wonderful community thank you all bye bye